Hi everyone, Dr. Campbell here and in this video I would like to introduce you to another code book that is utilized to assign codes for medical services and supplies and that is the HICPIX Level 2 Code Book. HICPIX stands for Healthcare Common Procedural Coding System. And one thing that was always confusing for me, and it's something that you should know, and that is HICPIX is actually divided into two levels, level one and level two. Level one is the CPT manual or current procedural terminology system, which is copyrighted by the American Medical Association. And CPT codes identify the services and procedures that are provided by healthcare providers as well as outpatient facilities. AMA maintains CPT. Now, HICPIX Level 2, I know, confusing, right? The system's name is HICPIX and the book's name is HICPIX. But HICPIX Level 2, also known as National Codes, they are actually maintained by CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, and they are utilized to identify products, supplies, and services that are not included in the CPT code set. Um, the CPT codes, as you may recall, are five characters in length. HICPIX codes are also five characters in length. One big difference is that HICPIX codes actually start with a letter as opposed to a number. And those letters, which are displayed here, A through V, actually identify um, specific supplies and services that can be captured with a HICPIX code. Now, the HICPIX codes themselves are organized based upon the purpose of the codes and the entity that's actually responsible for establishing and maintaining them. So you're gonna see four types. There are the permanent national codes, um, though there are temporary codes, um, you're going to see miscellaneous services, and then you also are going to see some HICPICS Level 2 modifiers. Now, in another video, I'll walk you through the HICPICS Level 1 modifiers, but HICPICS has its own manuals as well. So let's, uh, let's walk through um, what each of these um, codes actually do, the different sections. So the letter A, the codes that start with the letter A, are for administrative, miscellaneous, and investigational services, medical and surgical supplies, transportation services, including ambulance. Yes, guys, all of those are in the codes that start with the letter A. So transportation, medical and surgical supplies, and then administrative, miscellaneous, and investigational services. Then for the letter B, we have enteral and parental therapy codes. And here you'll find a code for things like insure, you know, the insure that you drink. Well, this is the insure. One of the codes that's here is the insure that can be given to the patient via a G-tube. Then the codes that start with the letter C, those are for hospital outpatient payment systems. And those are what are known as pass-through items related to the outpatient prospective payment system. Then we have the letter E, and letter E is for durable medical equipment. So walkers, wheelchairs, canes, things like that. The letter G, those are temporary procedures and professional services. Um, here, you're gonna see codes that do not have an option in CPT, but they have an option here in HICPIX. Letter H is for behavioral health and substance abuse treatment services. The letter J 
has two types of codes. We have uh, drugs other than chemotherapy, and then we also have chemotherapy drugs. The letter K, we have temporary codes that are assigned to DME, durable medical equipment, regional carriers, and those are under the Medicare administrative contractors. The letter L is for orthotics and prosthetic procedures, supplies. Then we have the letter M, which is for medical services or other medical services. P, laboratory. The letter Q, temporary codes assigned by CMS. The letter R, diagnostic radiology services. S, temporary codes assigned by private payers. Remember I said that these are organized based on the entity that's responsible uh, for wanting these codes as a part of the system. T, temporary codes that are uh, established by Medicaid. And V, you're going to have vision and hearing services. So now let's take a look at the actual HCPCS manual itself. And so if you have been introduced to the CPT manual, HCPCS looks very similar. So um, I am going to recommend that you always take a look at the table of contents for every code manual that you're looking at because here you'll always know what page something is on because the table of contents will give you that information. Oh, of note, there are not a lot of codes here, so it's not as big as CPT. CPT has about 7,000 codes. So HCPCS, the manual itself, is divided into an alphabetical index and a tabular list. So in my version of the 2020 HCPCS manual, you'll notice that the HCPCS codes, the index, start on page number one. There is what's known as a table of drugs, which is on page 45. The modifiers that are used in the HCPCS system and then the actual tabular list. So just like any other code set, the tabular list is where you actually verify the code. So let's take a look at the alphabetical index. And there are some instructions and some anatomical diagrams. I trust that you will explore your manual. Um, as I mentioned in my introduction to CPT video, before taking a national exam and when you're learning coding, the very first step is to learn how to use your manual. And you must take the time to sit down and explore it front to back. So this is the alphabetical index. Guys, it only has about 25 pages, so it's definitely a lot less than the other code systems. And... Um, what you'll notice uh, with the alphabetical index is that we have words that are in bold print. Those are, of course, main terms. Underneath the main term, you have a subterm. And then just like CPT and any other code set, you're given a code to look up in the tabular list. So just like all other code systems, you can never, ever, ever code from the alphabetical index. All right, so then after that, uh, again, the index is, well, I said it was 25 pages. It's 43 pages. <laughs> Immediately after that, you have what's known as the table of drugs. Now, remember those J codes that I mentioned? Here is where you actually are going to find the table of drugs. Now, at the very beginning of the table of drugs, one of the things you are um, given is some information about um, the different routes of administration for particular drugs. And so that's something that you'll want to pay attention to in addition to this instructional paragraph here. So here, how we use this table, we'll locate the drug. So like if I'm looking for acetaminophen, this is 10 milligrams IV, and this is the code that the table is recommending. Again, just like all other code systems, we never, ever, ever code 
from the table only. You still have to verify the code. So the index tells me, or the table here tells me, J0131. So let's look that up. And uh, again, HickPix codes start with the letter. And so let's see. And sometimes you forget, like, what uh, what code was I looking at? So let me, because I actually forgot that quick. J0131. Okay. All right. So J0131, page 296, is for an injection of acetaminophen, 10 milligrams. Now... One of the things that you'll want to um, note is that the table of drugs was organized by the drug name. It was organized by the dosage or the unit, the route of the administration, and then you saw the code, which is how I got J0131. But it's not until you get over here to the tabular list that you'll see different types of instructional notes and symbols and all of that. Speaking of symbols, just like CPT, at the bottom of each page, you can define what the symbols actually mean. All right. Um, the other thing that I did want to tell you is that let's say you had a situation where a patient had 20 milligrams of the acetaminophen. What you would do in that case is report J0131 twice, or if you're using um, on the claim form, you may be able to put a uh, number two in the units box to indicate that you want two units of that particular code. All right, let's go back up front. So we just saw the table of drugs and chemicals or not chemicals, I'm thinking of ICD-10 CM, table of drugs. The next thing you're going to see are the HICPIX level two modifiers, and there are a lot of them. Of note, on national exams, you generally don't have a lot of um, HICPIX questions. Um, for example, on the CPC, you may have five or six questions on the CPC exam for HICPIX. So very important to get those five correct um, by just knowing how to use your manual and everything that it has to offer. So here we have the um, HICPIX level two modifiers. Some of these modifiers you actually saw um, in the CPT manual, such as RT and LT. Those are actually, um, those are actually um, anatomical modifiers, but they're also HICPIX modifiers. Um, and then after you, you leave the modifiers, guys, then you go right into the tabular list and just like the rest of your code manuals, um, along the side of the page, you're going to see um, that the colors are going to change as well as you'll see what's actually on that particular page. So I'll turn past here. So these are the codes that start with the C. Um, and then also in here, guys, in the version that I'm using, which is the AMA version, we also have dental procedures here. All right, guys, so that has been the introduction to the HICPIX 2020 Level 2. Remember, there's two levels, Level 2 Manual. Be sure to follow us on our social media channels, Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and we also have a YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.